Los Angeles is the second largest city in the U.S. and is home to more than four million people. It has many claims to fame, the largest of course being the entertainment business. But the natural landscape is also popular, with many of its beaches being frequently visited. The history of Los Angeles, even in official state schools in California, is largely skipped over until the formation of Hollywood Entertainment in the 1920s. Yet there is more to the city than just movie stars and surfing. Even before Tinseltown, there was a rich and vibrant history to the area. The basin itself has been inhabited for thousands of years, and densely populated at that. It has seen battles. It was a booming agricultural and ranching center, as well as a regional trade hub, and has been an area rich in natural resources. And all of this before it became part of the United States. But what made this area fit to settle in the first place? And have all the resources necessary to create a thriving society? In this first episode, we shall be looking at the geological formation of what would become the Los Angeles Basin up until the beginnings of human habitation. But before we go any further, if you would like to help the channel, please subscribe, check out the Patreon page, and download the Brave browser for more private internet and more history videos. The Los Angeles Basin today is mostly concrete and asphalt, buildings, houses, and a few parks. It isn't drastically different from any other modern city, but what was it like before? In terms of much of Earth's history, the Los Angeles Basin was actually underwater. For a larger part of nearly three billion years of Earth's ocean's existence, in fact. Once in a while, some part of California might have seen the light of day, but for the most part, Los Angeles was a continental shelf. That's the submerged portion of land that is connected to the beach, and eventually drops off to the ocean bottom. It wasn't until the late Mesozoic era, within the Cretaceous period about 145 million years ago, that some portions of Southern California would begin to emerge as a chain of islands. This was due to volatile geologic pressures, such as the formation of volcanoes and the creation of mountains. Places like the Mojave Desert today would have just been a few miles inland from the ocean, and inhabited by dinosaurs, and plenty of other creatures from the time period. Los Angeles was a shallow sea, with many marine animals, invertebrates such as the giant ammonites, and marine reptiles like the Plesiotylosaurus filled the waves. 120 million years later, now in the Cenozoic era, within the Miocene, the Santa Monica, San Gabriel, San Bernardino, and San Jacinto mountain ranges and the Chino Hills region began to push up and change the landscape. Sea levels very gradually gave way over thousands of years, and new mountain ranges locked moisture coming off the ocean into the LA Basin, cutting it off from inland portions of the state, helping to slowly turn the Mojave region into a vast desert. As the LA Basin became a more terrestrial habitat around the Pliocene, and firmly so in the Pleistocene epochs around 1.8 million years ago, it held many natural resources. But more on that later. Also at that point, the oceans began to retreat as large portions of the Earth's water was being locked away in ice. Geologic formations, earthquakes, and the other tendencies of plate tectonics continued to shape the area. For the first time in its long history, most of the region finally began to surface from the ocean, as the ice ages commenced. Los Angeles finally became a land where most land animals could walk eat, and live. But the land wasn't all dry, and its aquatic past laid the groundwork for a prosperous future of human habitation. Today it is difficult to picture what it might have looked like. You need to see past the buildings and concrete. Based on leading theories, being once the home of many prehistoric marine animals for millions of years, the Los Angeles Basin was rich in oil. The oil, tar, and other related materials were everywhere, and it was during this time Around 50,000 years ago, the late Pleistocene, one of LA's landmarks began to form, the La Brea Tar Pits. Brea is Spanish for tar. Today it holds one of the largest collections of Pleistocene fossils and is visited by thousands of people every year. Many prehistoric mammals and birds got trapped in the tar in natural asphalt to die there and become preserved. While many prey animals like elk, deer, and even American camels were trapped, Many more predators looking to scavenge found themselves the poor victims of the tar. While fascinating and a little sad to think about how the animals must have felt, the tar pits give us a good idea of what life was like around the LA Basin at the time. 
During much of the late Pleistocene, free from human influence, mammoths, saber-toothed cats, giant armadillos, huge lions and dire wolves shared common ground alongside coyotes, California condors, mule deer, and more. The clay soils that developed from the basin's aquatic past were packed with nutrients, and different types of plants began to grow, with various poppies and pines, as well as drought-resistant plants like scrub grasses and sages. While the coastline would slowly turn into what is today known as a Mediterranean climate, more inland one can find a more drier halfway zone between the ocean and the desert. Where the city would first be built. Near where downtown is today, there is a flat plain with a few large hills. A river, its headwaters many miles away in the northern Santa Susana Mountains, past this plain, sometimes changing course due to flooding after a heavy rainfall. It would eventually find its way to the Pacific Ocean near where Long Beach is today. This was, of course, the Los Angeles River, a natural feature of the landscape most Angelinos presently drive past every day with hardly any notice. To the north of the plain, the land rose to a dense forest of trees and steep hills. Along its western coast were a few beaches, but mainly coastal marshland, stretching south for miles. The Bayona Marsh today is a remnant of those once vast wetlands. A few miles to the east, rolling hills overlooked the fertile plain, spotted with trees, ferns, and bushes. This is where the communities like Boyle Heights and Alhambra rest today. To the south of the plain laid more swamps and wetland, broken up intermediately by patches of solid, dry ground. Some of these were seasonal and dried up in the summer, while others stay filled with water for years after a large rainstorm. These inland swamps connected to coastal marsh on the southern coast, near a few beaches, and bordered by tall, vertical cliffs near today's San Pedro and Long Beach, and stretching further south. Finally, in between the western and southern coastlines, to the southwest, rose a massive hill, forming its own peninsula, which is known as Palos Verdes today. At the end of the Pleistocene, many of the large land animals of the Los Angeles area went extinct. Mammoths were no longer present, nor were the giant ground sloths. While mastodons did hold out for a little bit longer, the nine lives of the saber-toothed cats and American lions were up. But other animals, already present or evolving, rushed to fill in the gaps, some of whom are still with us today. This diverse, new landscape beheld gray wolves, grizzly and black bears, mountain lions, various snakes and rodents, and dozens of species of birds and waterfowl. Poppies, desert agave, pines, various wild onions and tubers, oak trees, wetland sedges, and more dotted the basin. Fish and invertebrates lined the kelp forests off the coast and the banks of the inland marshes and river. The marine habitats thrived in eels, several kinds of trout, abalone, pelicans, sharks, otters, whales, and others too many to count. There were also seasonal visitors, such as monarch butterflies and traveling birds, who used the vegetation and wetlands respectively to breed, eat, and rest on their travels between Canada and Mexico. The Los Angeles Basin presented a wild, beautiful Eden when the first humans began to arrive a little over 10,000 years ago, or around 8,000 BCE. And we'll save that for the next episode in the series. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please click that like button to get YouTube to get this vid out to more people, and subscribe. I would like to thank all my current subscribers and those of you here for the first time. I would like to also give a shout out to my first Patreon supporter, Subtunen Untanfor Uplands. I hope I got that right, but I probably didn't. But thank you so much, Uplands. Please consider supporting me on Patreon and downloading the Brave Browser for a faster, private internet that earns you rewards. Thank you for watching, and remember, never stop learning.